Right now, we're gonna place you under arrest for growing hemp without a license. A farmer caught in a South Carolina law enforcement division raid. It looked like they were coming to take down an army of criminals or something. I didn't know that it took that many people or that many much equipment and much manpower to come to uh, one farmer and I'm standing in a hemp field. Charged with growing a crop, a crop he had a license to grow. I think they wanted the photo op of the mowing it down and they wanted the press release uh, of we destroyed a crop. They got it. They did it. Well, they might have bit off more than they too. Now, a lawsuit alleges the state's top law enforcers and prosecutor's office conspired to illegally arrest this farmer and to destroy his crop. I'm embarrassed that the state did it. We're dealing with constitutional officers. We're dealing with certified law enforcement officers. We're dealing with members of the bar. They knew what his rights were, and it wasn't going to hurt anybody to afford him the opportunity to protect those rights. And instead of doing that, they trampled all over him. The lawsuit accuses the man leading SLED of helping to hide plans to raid this farm from the judge who signed Trent Pendarvis's arrest warrant. Jody, I've already told you, I'm not answering any more questions. Okay. Well, I have an obligation to ask and you can answer or not, but... Yeah, I don't trust anybody and the way, that, way it was handled and I would never trust those, those group of people again. If you had the chief of SLED, the agricultural commissioner, and the attorney general of South Carolina in this room today, what would you say to them? They need to resign. A farmer's fighting back tonight, three years after SLED agents raided his family farm and destroyed millions of dollars in his hemp crop. The farmers filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against SLED, the South Carolina Attorney General, and the state ag department. And he alleges the state carried out a conspiracy to arrest him, destroy his crop, and keeping evidence of his innocence from prosecutors. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Jody Barr with tonight's Seize and Destroy special report. Daddy been here since, they've been here since the eight, 18, oh, 1890. For more than 130 years, Trent Pendarvis's families farmed hundreds of acres of South Carolina's low country. Been in the same spot. They've harvested corn, soybeans, cotton, peanuts, and tobacco, nearly anything that grows from dirt and water. In more than 100 years, generations of the Pendarvis family made their living off this land. I've been doing it all my life, but I've been back full time since like 2000. In 2019, Pendarvis tried something new. The South Carolina legislature passed the state's Hemp Farming Act that year, and Governor Henry McMaster signed the act into law. Pendarvis applied for a hemp farming license, and in May 2019, the state's Ag Department awarded him a license to grow. But six months into the hemp farming program... I thought that I was going to pull up right here and they were going to get out and walk in the field and look like they did several times before that. Pendarvis got a call from a state Ag Department inspector telling him a sled agent wanted to meet him at his hemp field. I didn't see anybody or pass anybody, so I don't know where everybody was at when I first got here. But Pendarvis was about to see something he didn't see coming. When I turned around, all I could see was cars and trucks coming down that road right there. Cars and trucks coming from the other way. I'm not too sure that there wasn't some people already back in here somewhere. I got really overwhelmed with them, with as much people coming and I, didn't, I don't really know where everybody come from. His suspicions were right. This video an agent shot just before the raid shows Pendarvis driving up to meet the agents. The recording shows multiple law enforcement units lined up in his hemp field, along with state forestry commission agents and their equipment. How you doing? All right. Um, so did, did you get a copy of the order from Department of Ag saying that they weren't going to approve your field here, mm -hmm. location? Okay. And because of that, um, this this field's not lawfully able to grow. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's outside your um, your permit. A little more than a month before this, Pendarvis called the Ag Department to schedule a final inspection of his hemp crop. I've talked to him several times before then, so I, I figured it was just like we talked before. I'd already met him to a field, at the field before. They wanted to take 
tissue samples and everything else. So I thought it was another, he wanted to take more tissue samples or more samples or something like that. It's what I thought I was meeting him for. I didn't realize that I was going to get raided when I got there. When Pendarvis filed his application to grow hemp, he originally listed coordinates for another field on his family farm. But an extended drought and days of rain, he says, forced him to plant here. In the game of farming, necessarily your intentions to plant a certain crop in a certain field don't always work out because you're fighting the weather. So when we got real wet, the field that was intentionally was going to get the hemp planted in it got real wet and got underwater, so we had to move it to a different location. Pendarvis says he gave the inspector the updated coordinates and filed an amendment with the Ag Department. But the department denied Pendarvis's amendment and asked SLED to open a criminal investigation into Pendarvis for growing hemp in an unapproved field. The letter from the Department of Ag said that this was a willful violation, that they didn't believe it was a mistake or an oversight. What do you think it was? If it's a willful violation, how is it self-reported? You told on yourself? Yeah. Were you trying to hide anything? No. If I was trying to hide something, I wouldn't have self-reported the coordinates. When SLED rolled up that day, this wasn't some hidden marijuana grow in, in the middle of nowhere. The state knew where this crop was. Yes. The state had been there. A couple times. We've got to do something with this. So are you good with us cutting it down or? No, I'd rather you talk to my lawyer first. Okay. Who's your lawyer? I'll get a hold of Mr. Charles Williams. Okay. Pendarvis didn't know it, but he was seconds from losing his entire hemp allotment. This sled body camera recorded the September 2019 arrest. Go ahead. Then. All right. Well, right now we're going to place you under arrest for growing hemp without a license. Open it. For what? Because this is not, this is an unlawful. We'll, we'll, we'll serve the warrant here in just a minute. Tell you about what it's, what, what's all involved. Growing unlicensed, uh, cultivating unlicensed hemp. Can't grow it and then try to amend it. The no. white-haired agent who gave the command to arrest Pendarvis is Sled Major Frank O'Neill. He heads SLED's narcotics unit. That was, I didn't understand the way the thing read. You're on the advisory board, right? Mm -hmm. I would think you know, sir. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, serve the warrant here and explain everything else to you. Major Frank O'Neill and the other SLED agent, John Neal, searched him. Can I call my, my lawyer before y'all? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Let them finish you um, your hands? getting your knives and stuff, and yes, then they're going to take those cuffs right. loose. Okay. For a second, and we'll let you make that telephone call. Okay. But O'Neill intervenes, calling Captain Glenn Wood, who was wearing the body camera, to the side. Wood turns the camera off, and their conversation was not recorded. Some time later, the recording restarts. I can't call my lawyer before y'all mess with him? No, sir, you call your lawyer down to jail. We're we going to cut it regardless. Your lawyer, your lawyer can't stop us from cutting it. It's grown in an awful location. I don't understand the, what, what's the problem here. All right. Just to, to try to briefly explain it to you, this field is an unlicensed location. Mm -hmm. The Department of Agriculture sent you a letter that said this is a willful violation of your uh, permit. Would it be a willful violation? They turn it over to, to SLED to pursue criminally. Part of that uh, contract is, is there's any um, hemp growing on unlicensed location that you signed, it says it can be forfeited and destroyed. You agree to that. So we're here to enforce that agreement. They're going to be out on Maple Hill Road. Well, with the way, with the way the contract was wrote and the way that I did the amendments, I got an email from the amendments. It don't say anything about the date. It says fill the amendment out and send it back. That's what I did. In fact, the South Carolina Department of Agriculture developed this form, allowing a farmer in Pendarvis' situation to move a field. More than a month before this raid, Pendarvis filed this amendment. Back and forth between the Ag Department, SLED and everything, I asked them if I needed to get an attorney. And they told me that everything was going to be fine, that it was working everything out, that I didn't need an attorney. The whole program's brand new, 
So let's try to figure it out together is the way I was told. That's what they were telling me. And then and come to later on, I found out that they were doing something else on the backside. And that something else was? They were planning to destroy the crop and arrest me. Coming up. I really think I, I should be able to talk to my attorney before y'all destroy them. Pendarvis says Sled's body camera showed agents doing everything they could to stop anyone from getting in the way. But at the beginning, he was like, hey, don't call nobody right now while I still had my phone. Don't call nobody. I'll give you a chance in a minute. All of a sudden, he changes his tune and he wasn't going to let me call anybody to start with. Why do you think that was? Because I don't think he wanted anybody to, else to come to that field till he destroyed the crop. Pendarvis's legal team uncovered what they believe is a documented conspiracy. They knew what his rights were, and it wasn't going to hurt anybody to afford him the opportunity to protect those rights. And instead of doing that, they trampled all over him. And the man leading SLED won't explain what happened. I, I'm not trying to badger you, yes, Chief, but this is, and, and this these is are serious allegations. Way, this is your way of always trying to deal with things. When our season destroy investigation continues after the break. On July 30th, 2019, the South Carolina Department of Agriculture observed mature hemp plants growing on an unlicensed site location on Maple Hill Road. Following the visit, uh, Pendarvis applied for an amendment to his original application. What they were told me to do. Okay, let me finish. As sled agents work to destroy every hemp plant in Trent Pendarvis's field, the lawsuit shows a state agricultural worker snapping selfies as a deputy drove Pendarvis 20 miles away to the Dorchester County Jail near Charleston. Probably like six, seven hours. Six, seven hours in a jail cell? Yeah. What are you thinking as you're sitting there and watching the clock tick by? I'm thinking, why are you in jail for growing a simple crop? It's not like I'm growing marijuana or... I was basically treated like I was a drug dealer, which... and I'm just growing a normal crop. SLED charged him with unlawful cultivation of hemp. That charge states it's unlawful for a person to cultivate, handle, or process hemp without a hemp license. But the Ag Department issued Pendarvis a hemp license four months before. One of Pendarvis's first calls when he was freed from jail was to his attorney, Brad Hutto. He was really perplexed as to why they were doing this to him. It became apparent to me that uh, he was a guinea pig. Hutto went to work to get the evidence SLED gathered and planned to use against Pendarvis. They didn't give me everything. <laughs> Imagine that. You know, they gave me what they wanted me to see, and it's taken a while to piece this all together. Hutto called Patrick McLaughlin, a civil rights attorney in Florence. The pair filed lawsuits against SLED, the state ag department, and the Dorchester County Sheriff. That lawsuit led to discovery, which uncovered emails Pendarvis's attorneys say prove Trent Pendarvis was a victim of a conspiracy planned by some of the most powerful law enforcers in the state of South Carolina. I had more information because of the discovery in the civil case than the prosecutor had been given by SLED to prosecute the case. So as I gathered some of the evidence in the civil case, because I was dealing with the prosecutor trying to convince him that it wasn't willful, and here's why, they weren't giving that to the prosecutor. I had to give that to the prosecutor. A grand jury indicted Pendarvis weeks after his arrest. It took the solicitor three years to dismiss the charge, finding SLED had probable cause to arrest Pendarvis, but did not have enough evidence to prove he broke the law. Which is a little bit unusual when the defense lawyer is giving the prosecution lawyer evidence from the law enforcement agency that's making the charges. Their refusal to just be honest caused those criminal charges to hang over Trent's head longer than they should have. And there's only one reason to hide the ball on that, and that's because you didn't want those criminal charges to go away. You wanted them to be prosecuted. This all started in July 2019, when the Ag Department would not approve Pendarvis's field amendment. Discovery records show Ag Department Assistant Commissioner Derek Underwood emailed SLED asking for a criminal investigation. SLED's first step, asking the Attorney General's Office for legal advice on how to enforce a violation of the state's then brand new Hemp Farming Act. So they went to the Attorney General's Office and they said, this is unclear. 
what's the proper procedure? And in that opinion, the attorney general told them, you got to give them uh, the farmer an opportunity to be heard, i.e. to challenge this finding that you've made against him. And three, that should take place with a judge. You need judicial authorization. That's what you need to do because we're dealing with important constitutional rights, due process rights, and that's the best way to go about preserving this. This August 2019 email between SLED Major Frank O'Neill and Derek Underwood shows SLED knew the law on enforcement was not clear. We're having difficulty in what to address with so many gray areas concerning enforcement. Unlike Kentucky, we don't really have comprehensive regulation that addresses all of the possible concerns. We're having to get AG opinions along the way, and the last thing we want to do is an action that will be perceived in a negative light by the media or General Assembly. The day O'Neill sent that email, the Attorney General issued this legal opinion telling SLED the act was not drafted with the greatest clarity. The act does not specify what procedures SLED must follow to enforce the law adding, our office advises that SLED proceed with the utmost care to fully ensure that the grower and all interested parties receive due process in any enforcement action. The emails McLaughlin turned up show SLED initially attempted to comply with the AG's opinion. This September 11th email shows SLED attorney Adam Whitsett asked Dorchester County Circuit Court Judge Diane Goodstein to meet them and sign a seizure and destruction order against Trent Pendarvis and his hemp crop. A few hours later, Goodstein's law clerk told SLED the judge would not sign it, but if SLED wanted a hearing in open court to argue why she should, she would be glad to give you one. SLED's attorney turned down Goodstein's offer to be heard. Look, they tried to go through the proper steps, right? They went to the Attorney General and said, hey, we think maybe we're entitled to destroy, destroy this farmer's hemp crop. How should we go about that? The Attorney General told them they didn't like that. They went to the judge and they, without showing the judge the Attorney General's opinion and said, judge, we think we're entitled to destroy this man's hemp crop. The judge said, uh, you might be. Let's have a hearing. The judge said, I'm available courtroom's open, you certainly are entitled to a hearing, notify the farmer and come on up here. They didn't like that. They wanted to go around that. Emails turned over to Pendarvis's legal team show. Eight days later, SLED went to the county magistrate's office and left with an arrest warrant for Trent Pendarvis. The magistrate's records show SLED did not tell the lower court judge of its plans to not only arrest Trent Pendarvis, but to seize and destroy what Pendarvis believes was a $2 million crop. That was only an arrest warrant. That magistrate had no authority to order the destruction of that crop, and the magistrate did not order the destruction of that crop. But all these people knew it. They had been warned, specifically warned, if you don't do it right, you're going to violate his constitutional rights. And they didn't care. Coming up, Pendarvis says SLED wasn't finished. I said, well, how do you know that? And he said, well, one of the officers kind of pulled me aside and said, I think that, that we're coming after your crop, and I don't like what's going on. And allegations SLED was on a mission to further an agenda to ensure cannabis remained illegal in South Carolina. What we're seeing now is we're seeing these products sold in stores. Seventy percent of those that we're testing in our laboratory are above the legal limit. Which makes it what marijuana. Hemp, which makes it marijuana. That was our concern that we uh, let folks know about when we when were debating that bill. It's not like it's a hidden agenda. It, it's an uh, out front agenda. They don't like it. I think they were trying to send the message, you better stay away from this hemp farming because we're going to come after you. We're going to treat you like drug dealers, not like farmers. When our seize and destroy investigation continues after this. When the act was passed, the act said that Commissioner Weathers and the department needed to file a state plan within 60 days. They didn't do that. That plan now exists with an entire section devoted to enforcement. South Carolina Department of Ag determined Pendarvis actions willfully violated the Hemp Farming Act because prior approval of the new growing location was not obtained before the hemp was grown on Maple Hill Road site and denied the amendment application. The SCDA notified SLED that Pendarvis was willfully and unlawfully violating the Hemp Farming Act and requested a criminal investigation. Pendarvis's attorneys think we've got to do something with this. So are you good with us cutting it down or 
Now, I'd rather you talk to my lawyer first. The body camera recordings are part of what they believe is a state-sanctioned conspiracy. What's the first thing they ask Trent? They ask him if they can have his consent to destroy his hemp crop. And what's he tell them? No. No. I'd like to call my lawyer first. If you were on sound legal footing, why are you asking the farmer for his consent? If he's already validly given it and he doesn't have a right to challenge that at all, which is the legal position you have concocted with the Attorney General at that point in time to justify what you're doing, why are you asking him for his consent? Yes, sir. When you see those sled agents turn the body camera off, go have a conversation and they come back, does it concern you when you see that recording start and stop? Well, I, I would love to know exactly what was said when uh, Major O'Neill called uh, Agent Wood to the side and the audio goes out because all those folks were included on the email that SLED sent Judge Goodstein trying to get that order signed. So they all knew that the Chief Administrative Judge for Dorchester County had refused to sign an order for it. And so you've got the guy sitting there wanting to call his lawyer. And what Major O'Neill at some point says, well, there ain't nothing your lawyer can do. We gonna take the crop anyway. Well, that's not true. There was something the lawyer could do. And we know the lawyer could do something because the lawyer did it in Marion. That, that body camera tells the tale of the tape. It's, awful, it's awfully revealing. He was asking for his lawyer and they shut it down. They stopped it because they knew that what they were doing was wrong. And they knew that if it got in front of a judge that day, a judge would have put a stop to it. That's exactly why they didn't tell the magistrate what they intended to do that day either. They didn't want the magistrate to put a stop to it. Pendarvis says he doesn't know why the state decided to handle his case this way and believes he might have gotten caught in the middle of a political hit in SLED's fight against legalizing marijuana. Brad Hutto, who is also the South Carolina Senate Minority Leader, believes so too. Was there attempt to overzealously enforce and wrongfully enforce the Hemp Act a part of their agenda to continue to oppose the introduction of medical marijuana to South Carolina? We suggest that there is a connection there. And Trent Pendarvis felt the brunt of that. Yes, he did. SLED Chief Mark Kill and AG Allen Wilson have opposed marijuana legalization for years. The lawsuit quotes Wilson as calling marijuana the most dangerous drug at a state house press conference in 2019 while Kill looked on. Oh, this is a topic that uh, I think most people know that I have am very much opposed to here in South Carolina. Chief Kill met with the York County Sheriff and made this video in January, both lobbying against a medical marijuana bill making its way through the state house. I happen to be president of a national organization, the Association of State Criminal Investigative Agencies. Every director from those agencies tell me, Chief, if there's if you don't have it, do everything you can to defeat this bill. It's not good for your state, and there's no need to put your children through the challenges of, of facing recreational mar of medical marijuana in South Carolina. We asked SLED Chief Mark Kill, Attorney General Alan Wilson, Ag Commissioner Hugh Weathers, the Forestry Commission, and the Dorchester County Sheriff for interviews to address these allegations. Not a single one agreed to participate, each saying they won't discuss pending litigation. I want to talk to you about this uh, situation with Trent Pendarvis. Yeah, well, we're not going to talk about that. The only defendant we were able to find, SLED Chief Mark Kill. Okay. I'll tell you, like I, we sent you a message, that, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be inappropriate for me to talk about pending, pen, pending litigation. And, uh, okay. And that would be the same message that I would tell anybody with the media. And okay. I think you know that's, I think you know that's, statement I would give you. I got you. Well, the, what we want to ask about, these I'm are... Not going, I'm not going to answer any questions about anything okay. to do with that pending litigation. Did you and your agency conspire to arrest this going, man and destroy his property? Jody, I've already told you I'm not going to answer any questions about anything that has to do with this pending litigation. And I pre appreciate you. I got you. You know, but, but again, that's my statement. I understand, but I have to ask you these questions yeah, well, because the viewers them, are going you've to ask look. them, but I've, I've told you okay. I'm not answering that question. Well, how about this question? I'm not asking. Did, I'm not answering any questions okay. about pending litigation, gotcha. just as I wouldn't about any investigation that was ongoing. You know that's our normal statement mm -hmm. that would be inappropriate to answer any questions regarding that. 
and that's my statement here. Well, you guys talked about Trent Pendarvis' pending litigation when you arrested him. So how is this different? Jody, I've already told you. I'm not answering any more questions. But SLED did discuss Trent Pendarvis's pending litigation. SLED not only published a press release on Pendarvis' arrest, but Kill was quoted in a Charleston newspaper discussing details of Pendarvis' pending prosecution just weeks after his arrest. Well, I have an obligation to ask, and you can answer or not, but why did SLED not follow the advice of the Attorney General's office in its August 8, 2019 opinion to I've give already, this man a hearing? I've already told you what my answer to that question is. Okay. And that's, the, that's all I'm going to say. Well, why did SLED just go around Judge Goodstein when Judge Goodstein said, before you destroy this man's property, you need to give him a hearing? Jody. Yes, sir. You know. I, I'm not trying to badger you, yes, Chief, but this is, and, and this is these your, are serious this is allegations. Way, this is your way of always trying to deal with things. And you know, I'm going to be a professional. I'd like for you to extend that same courtesy as being professional and being a professional journalist. And like I say, we've, we've give you an answer to that question that we're not going to discuss pending litigation. And you should understand that. I know you do understand it. Well, you that's and not I, an answer, you Chief. You and I have had conversations before many times and uh, about different things. And that is the answer to my question. And that's the end of our conversation today. All right. Well, if you change your mind and want to address these specifics, please let me know. What are you looking for now at the end of all of this? The people that conspired on this, I want it brought to the attention of, hey, this is your public figures and this is what they do. This is the way they treat a, a farmer. If they're going to treat me like that, what about you? What about everybody else? Is that who you want representing you? Is that who you want in your chief of power? I don't think so. You think this lawsuit will help hold them accountable? I hope it does. The one person in this entire thing who has not hidden anything is Trent Pendarvis. The defendants can't say that. Pendarvis' legal team contends the wrongdoers in this case are the ones who threw the book at Trent Pendarvis. The evidence we've got is a hell of a lot more evidence showing SLED, the Attorney General, and the Department of Ag Dorchester County, Forestry, hell of a lot more evidence that they willfully violated Trent's constitutional rights more than Trent ever willfully violating the Hemp Act. With the dismissal of the criminal charges in August, Trent Pendarvis' legal trouble is over, but his civil rights lawsuit against the 40 named defendants could take years to resolve. Now, although none of the accused would talk about the allegations, they will have to provide answers to the lawsuit. Those answers are due to the court in mid-November.